Hello, I'm Landon Slungin, coming back to you with another video. If you don't know me, I have two years of professional web development experience, and I've been doing a bunch of Rico Camp challenges, and today is no exception. Today, we're going to be in the responsive web design new portion of Free Code Camp, and we are going to be learning CSS Flexbox by building a photo gallery. Should be fun, and there are only 21 challenges, so let's get right into it. Start just start project. All right, it's going to look something like that. Should be beautiful. All right, so like before, we have to add this doc type, lang attribute HTML, and all that jazz. So let's just do that quick. It's pretty boring, but it's at the top of all HTML pages. Uh, just so that we know what it is. All right, doc type HTML. We need an HTML tag. And then inside the HTML tag, uh, we need well, lang, lang of English, because we are English, of course, in America. All right. Uh, and then we need a body element and a head. So we need head first, and then body. Body, body, body. Beautiful. All right. Easy. All right. Within your head element, add a meta tag. Of course, meta. Oh, inside. We need a meta tag. Meta with UTF-8 or content, right? Yeah, char set. That's what I thought. Char set equal to UTF-8. And then we need a uh, viewport. Wait, no. With the name set to viewport. Okay, so name equals viewport. And content set to width, device width initial scale one. Uh, that just makes it more responsive for mobile users. Something like that, I believe. I think so. All right, let's see if that works. Oh, you should have two meta elements. Oh, uh, okay. Add a meta tag. Also add a meta tag. Okay, so we need one meta tag for, for that and another one for this. Okay, you got me, you got me. Let's just delete that part, and then that should be good. Yep, there we go. All right, within your head element, add a title element with the text set to photo gallery. All right, we'll go title. This is what shows up uh, on the top of our tab. Okay, so we need photo gallery and a link to link to our style sheet. All right, so we need link. Uh, href equals styles.css and the uh, rel or yeah, rel equals style sheet. Style sheet. All right, let's see if that works. Yay. All right, add a header element within the body element and assign a class of header to it. Add a header element within the body. All right, header. This is like a div, but it's semantics. All right, header and assign a class of header to it, and then create an h1 inside of the header. All right. All right, so class equals header. And then we need an h1 in here. h1 for some large text, of course. Uh, with CSS Flexbox photo gallery, I'll just copy that over. And beautiful, there it shows up. And we our code passed the test. All right, step five, below your dot header element, create a new div element and assign it a class of gallery, lower header element. All right, we need a new div, assign a class of gallery. Okay, so right here, we need a div class equals gallery, I believe. All right, and then slash div to close it. And then this div will act as a container inside the gallery element, create nine image elements. All right, so let's just go image. Let's do nine of those, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, check. Oh, your new div should have a class of gallery. Okay, I just spelled that wrong. L, there we go. There we go. Let's submit and go to next challenge. Next, give each image a source attribute according to its order document. All right, so let's just do here. And then I think I can do control alt down. Yes, for multiple cursors, control alt down. And then we need source. First image should have a source equal to that. The rest should be the same, except replace the one with the number of the images in the current document. Okay. So we just need to grab this, uh, copy it, 
and I'll just go down here again. Whoops. Add all these cursors, paste it in. All right, and then this has to be two, three, four, five, and so on. Six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so there's all of our cat photos. Normalize your box model by creating a star selector and setting the box sizing property. Okay, so now we're in styles.css. Okay, so we want to select everything, and we do that with the star selector. And we need the box sizing to be border box. Okay. Border box. All right, I'm not sure if that does much. Actually, it probably does. All right, your images are too big. Create a dot gallery image selector. Okay, so dot gallery. Uh, image, so anything inside of that first gallery div, and then all the images inside of that uh, that class div or that div for that class. All right. Uh, give them uh, all a width of one hundred percent. Yes, of course, so that they take up only one hundred percent of the space instead of overflow off. And then a max width of three hundred fifty pixels, so they shrink as needed, but don't get too big. All right. So max width. 350 pixels just so it doesn't get too big when we expand this or I guess when it goes so it'll shrink down to fill up 100% but then a max width is 350 so it'll you know make take up that much space all right uh, also set height property my bad height 300 pixels all right oh, it's stretched out a little bit all right move the margin from your body elements all right so the font family to sans serif. Okay, so I just, oh, okay. What? Oh, so body, okay, I need to select the body. And then I can go margin of zero, is that what they want? And then set the font family to sans serif, font family to sans serif, and give it a background color. Background color equal to a gray color it looks like f5 f6 f7 f6 f7 and that should be a gray color yep okay i think that's about it beautiful and well it's mostly white actually line your header text in the center okay so we just have to grab dot header and then do text line center text line center easy enough all right make the text uppercase using text transform okay text transform uppercase like so all right give it a padding of 32 pixels padding 32 pixels uh so the background color okay background background color of this this grayish or this is actually more black i think yeah it's black and then we need the color to be white it's not the so that, that actually shows up. And I need a semicolon here. I wonder if white works or if it actually wants it to be hashtag FFF. Uh, I'll, I'll see you later. Border bottom. Four pixels solid. And then that hash for color. All right. So there's the border bottom. It's like a yellowish. And it does actually want that to be hashtag FFF for white. All right. There we go. All right, Flexbox is a one-dimensional CSS layout. They can control the way items are spaced out and aligned within a container. Flexbox is very important. All you have to do to use Flexbox is to do display flex on your CSS um, declaration, basically. All right, to use it, give an element a display property flex. Yes, okay. This will make the element a flex container. Any direct children of flex container are called flex items. All right, so we're going to do a gallery. So our gallery selector. And we're going to make it a flex container by doing display flip, like so. All right. Flexbox has a main and cross axis. The main axis is defined by the flex direction property, which has four possible values, row, row, reverse, column, column, reverse. The axes and the directions will be different depending on the text direction, the value shown, or for left to right text direct, dex, direction. Try the different values to see how they affect the layout. When you're done, set an explicit flex direction of row on the gallery elements all right so 
By default, flex direction is row. That's why we have this um, showing up in a row like right here. <laughs> As you can see, whoops, I we just went back. Whoops. Uh, let's go forward if I can. Okay, beautiful. And then, uh, so column, we'll just make it so that they're all in a column. And that's how it was before. Um, but flex is row first. Uh, and that, that we just need to make sure to set that explicitly. Direction row, nothing will change because it's already row. Uh, row reverse is just so that they're reversed um, in the list. And also column reverse is the same thing. All right. A flex wrap property determines how your flex items behave when the flex container is too small. Setting it to wrap will allow the items to wrap to the next row or column. No wrap will prevent your items from wrapping and shrink them if needed. Make it so that your flex items wrap. All right, so right now it's no wrap, and that's why they're all in one row. But once we select it, uh, make it wrap, it will actually go down to the next uh, rows, or like actually <laughs> not overflow. Okay, so. Let's just do flex wrap and set it to wrap. All right, as you can see, now they're like that, but when I make it bigger, then they will line themselves with when there's more space. All right, let's move on. The justify content property determines how the items inside a flex container are positioned along the main axis, affecting their position and the space around them. Give your gallery selector a justify content property with center as a value. All right, so we're gonna do justify content of center. So now they should be centered, yep, like so. Uh, one thing to note is if flex direction is set to column, then it will center it horizontally. Uh, and that's what it means by positioned along the main axis. Yeah. All right, let's see. And then aligned items is um, along, across, along the cross axis, all right? with your flex direction set to row, your cross axis would be vertical. So yep, that's uh, that's right. Uh, to vertically center your images, give your gallery selector and align items property with center as value. I'm guessing not much will happen because of that, because we don't have a padding set or a or margin or whatever. So let's just uh, do it, but I don't think anything will change. All right, yep, nothing changes. Let's just go. All right, give your gallery selector a padding property set to 20 pixels, 10 pixels to give some space around the container. All right, so we're going to go padding, 20 pixels on the y-axis, 10 pixels on the x. All right, then give it a max width of 1400. Max width, 1400 pixels. And add a margin of zero auto so that it is centered. All right, so there's our gallery. It should be centered and also have a max width, so uh, 1400, which is basically this uh, the width of the screen. All right, let's see. Yep. Notice how some of your images have become distorted. This is because the images have different aspect ratios. Rather than setting each aspect ratio individually, you can use the object fit property to determine how images should behave. All right, give your gallery image selector the object fit property and set to cover. All right, object fit, set to cover. Um, this property is very important when working with images. Sometimes we'll do cover, sometimes we'll do contain. Um, but in our case, we're just going to use cover so that it covers the box uh, that is defined in. All right, let's see. Yep, looks good. Your images need some space between them. The gap CSS shorthand property sets gaps. All right, let's see here. Give your gallery flex container gap property with 16 pixels as a value. It's easy enough. We just need gap down here of 16 pixels. Ugh, pixels. All right, so now there's space between these guys. Smooth out your images a bit by using border radius. All right, border radius of 10 pixels. All right, that should round out the corners. Looks, looks good. The after pseudo element creates an element that is the last child of the selected element. You can use it to add an empty element after the last element. If you give it the same width as the images, it will push the last image to the left when the gallery is in a two column layout. Right now it is in the center because you set justify content center on the flex container. All right, container after content, yep, okay. 
create a new selector using an after pseudo element on the gallery element. All right, so we'll go dot gallery. And then we need after here. I don't really use this much. Um, add a content property set to an empty string. So content, empty string, and a width of 350 pixels. All right, so I guess that will add basically another element at the bottom. No. Oh, what does it do? It will push the last image to the left. Um, something like this. I I don't know what it does. Maybe it will explain in the next one. All right, the alt image attribute should describe the image content. Screen readers announce the alternative text in place of images. If the image can't be loaded, this text is presented in place of the image. Complete the project, add an alt attribute to all nine of your cats. Use a value at least five characters long for each. I wonder if they can be the same. Hopefully, so I can get through this quicker. All right, let's see your image, 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 image. We go alt equals half photo. Is that good enough? Let's see. Yay, beautiful. All right, and there we go. That was uh, our beautiful photo gallery. Uh, pretty simple, honestly. Let's see if I can go back. Yep, pretty simple, but it had some really good concepts for flex. Uh, and Flexbox is heavily used in, in the um, front-end web development world. So it's very important to know. You should uh, memorize uh, the properties of Flexbox since they're so important. Anyways, that's it for me. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to comment, subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next time. See you. Bye.